This is George Carlos, and welcome back to another epic book review. Hey, welcome back, everybody. I am really excited to actually do this epic book review. And as I said before, they're really book reviews. They're just me talking about books I really like. I'm trying to filter through some books, get to know them and and share ones I think could actually have a really great impact on an individual level and sometimes on a school level and sometimes both. And this book that I'm going to share today, I think does a really great job of doing that. And before I get into the book, really committed to it this year, I would love for you um, to actually hit subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. And if you're not watching this on YouTube, go over to YouTube, please hit subscribe. And if you can give this, this video, that'd be awesome. Really helps me to grow the channel. And I'm going to actually ask you a question that is really based on some of the learning that I took away from the book. And it's really thinking about this question. How do you implement rest into your everyday routine as an educator? And that question is something I didn't think I would ask before. And I'll tell you why as I get in the book. And so the book I'm reviewing today is one actually I read and I actually didn't read it, which is weird. I listened to it on Audible. It is actually called Peak Performance, Elevate Your Game, Avoid Burnout, and Thrive with a New Science of Success by Brad Stolberg and Steve Magnus. And I started listening to this book on, on Audible and what's weird is I used to listen to, uh, I used to listen to Audible on planes when I would be working and I found it was useless to me. And the reason I'd say that is because I was working. So I would actually try to be on my email, multitasking and trying to figure out, try to listen to a book just to keep me distracted. But if you're distracted, I'm not really listening to the book. So it just didn't seem like to be a really good workflow for me and it didn't really help. And actually fascinatingly enough, it talks about in this book how hard it is to actually multitask and thus giving your attention to something very specific in the moment is shown to actually increase success. And I'm comfortable with multitasking at some points, but I think you have to think about like low level thinking when we're doing multitasking versus I'm trying to absorb ideas from a book while answering emails and, and thinking about different ideas to share with people. And so as I was listening to this book, I've been running, I've been trying to improve my running, and I felt really mentally worn out. So I started listening to some books on Audible, because when I'm running and listening to Audible, the only thing I'm trying to do when I'm running is put my one foot in front of the other and not fall down. So I'm not really thinking about it. And I actually really enjoy listening to books on Audible, sometimes listen to podcasts, and it distracts me from some of the pain I'd be going through or some of the doubt that kind of creeps into my head. And sometimes it inspires me. And I was listening to a lot of political podcasts and I felt, oh, this is exhausting me. I don't want to add this to my run. I tried some sports podcasts and I still listen to those and I find they're really helpful, but I wanted to try some Audible. I listened to a couple of books and this all happened when I, I was reading, I was taking what I call a little sabbatical. So basically my busiest time of the year is January till December. December is very slow for the work that I do, consulting and speaking to groups in education. And I try to force myself to take a sabbatical, stay offline, not really create stuff, and just kind of take a break. And the break has led to some really great things that rest. But I always try to really make sure that I get my fitness in tune, my health in check, get some good routines and not be the person that waits till January 1st to start something new, but actually build momentum into the new year where I'm already hitting the ground running. And when I lost weight, I didn't lose it when I started January 1st. I created habits before, and so I was getting running, but I felt during this break, I was so exhausted. And I just, I felt the rest wasn't actually helping to me. And part of the reason was I wasn't really resting. I was really pushing my body. I was really just increasing my miles and running, working out a ton of time. And what was really fascinating about this book was it really, when I was listening to it and thinking about the title, the idea of peak performance, I thought it was going to be one of those inspirational books that really get your game to the next level and really pumps you up and motivates you and things like that. But it wasn't really that type of book, which kind of threw me off. It was a book that talked about some of those things, and I'll get to that in a second. But it really focused on 
the notion of rest. And it wasn't the only theme, but it was a major theme. You can see it coming up over and over again. And I am someone who tends to just go, just tend to go push. And as I was listening to this, I was thinking a lot of the struggles I'm having right now is because I'm not letting my body recover. I'm not letting my mind recover. And I decided I was going to start trying some of these things. So what's weird is I actually started implementing some of the ideas while I was listening to the book. And I started to actually do a a different half marathon training. And you're thinking, you're talking about rest, but you're doing half marathon training. But the thing is with half marathon training, you have to implement rest days in very specific ways so your legs can recover and do different things on different days. And what I found was I was actually taking more time off of running I was running fewer miles but when I was doing my long runs I actually started getting faster because of the rest because I felt more fresh and I could push a little bit harder and so that really helped me and why I really and I'll tell you right away I I really recommend this book I really enjoy it if you are a teacher if you're an educator I think this is a great book and I think it'd be a great book for conversations. It's made me think about some stuff I want to write and think about how I can utilize this to help education. And I would say that the last time I read a book that really made me rethink my practices and change my direction that I can really think, it's not that I don't get great ideas from books, but has made me go in a different direction. That's what I, that's where I'd say about this book. The last time I read a book like that, I would think it was Dan Pink's Drive, which made me really rethink assessments, awards in schools, and it shifted a lot of my thinking. And so this book surprised me in how they talked about rest. So I, I really recommend it. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the book, and I actually at, asked ChatGPT to do a summary, and I took it modified it, but I'm just going to read it to you so you have an idea uh, of what the book is about. And so this is what it shared with a little bit of my editing. Peak Performance by Brad Stolberg and Steve Magnus is a book for anyone looking to improve their performance in any field. The authors, both highly respected coaches, share their wealth of knowledge and experience in this book. The book breaks down the science of performance and explains in a way that is easy to understand. Topics such as training, recovery, and mental preparation are covered in depth. Stilberg and Magnus provide practical trips, tips, and strategies that can be applied to any type of performance, not just athletics. They delve into the mental and emotional side of things, which is often overlooked in performance improvement books. They talk about how to handle pressure, how to set goals, and how to stay motivated. The authors emphasize the importance of finding the right balance in all aspects of performance from physical to mental to emotional. The book is not just for elite performers. It's for anyone looking to improve, whether you're a beginner or an experienced pro. Stuhlberg and Magnus also talk about the importance of recovery, both physical and mental, and how it plays a crucial role in achieving peak performance. The authors also explore the impact of sleep, stress, and nutrition on performance and how to optimize them for best results. Peak Performance is a comprehensive guide that covers every aspect of performance improvement from physical to the mental and emotional. It's a must read for anyone looking to take their performance to the next level. And when you hear that, and as I'm reading that, what someone might defer or infer from the description is that this is something for athletes or not necessarily for someone working in any particular field. But I found the exact opposite. I found that, yeah, it helps with my fitness goals, some of the exercise things that I'm trying to achieve. But I really started thinking about like, how is this affecting my writing? How is this affecting not only how I am when I'm doing my work, but how I am when I'm with my family, which is weird. Like I started thinking about that and how can I utilize these things? And when you often think about the notion of rest, we often only talk about it in context of when we're taking breaks right so prior to january that little winter break that we get around christmas time what happens is a lot of people focus on breaks then but then it's right back to just grinding it out until you can just make it to that next break and that's why i asked the question how do you implement rest into your every day and maybe it's not your every day but maybe it's into your weekly your weekly routine So that's what really stuck out to me. It doesn't matter what you're doing, whether it's you're trying to improve your health, you're trying to get better at your job, and maybe even helping our, I shouldn't say maybe, for sure helping our students 
to improve because think about the aspect of a typical high school and this practice still goes on in way too many high schools you have students who go from class five minute break and when we say break who are we kidding and it's like going from class to class and it's just information overload and then we wonder why so many struggle but can we implement breaks in meaningful ways? Can we implement rest into the day where people can actually recover, benefit from that, and actually go on to the next level? One thing I've been doing as a, someone who speaks and leads professional development, I have, I have explicitly worked with groups and said, you have to build in a certain amount of time into the day where people can reflect and connect so that they can just have time to just chill out relax, take a walk, not rush to grab a drink, grab a, something to eat, and then go to the bathroom as quick as possible and get to the next session. And a lot of times we do that because we have this notion that we're wasting our time in the day because we only have a few days together throughout the year. We got to get pack as much learning in as possible. But if you don't actually absorb any of the learning because you are just pushing yourself to the point of exhaustion, none of it's going to actually stick. So it, whether you're in education, whether you think about this from your own perspective, how you can implement the students, that's why I really appreciated the book. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk about three quotes and why they resonate with me so much from the book. And so the first one is really a quote that kind of summarizes the book. It says this, stress plus rest equals growth. It's a simple yet profound guide to structuring your days, weeks, and years. So that, that struck me, right? So if you think about this quote, stress plus rest equals growth. Let's think about the formula that's often done in education and how it's a little bit different. It's stress plus stress. And what does that actually equal? Burnout. And that's what happens a lot of times in education. It is just stress after stress. And so even though I'm talking about this notion of rest... It's not that we don't push ourselves, we don't get to a better place, but how are we thoughtfully implementing rest into our everyday, into the work week, into our lives? And people will sometimes think this is actually seen as a way to be lazy, to not really strive to do your best. But I was actually looking at rest to improve performance, not to lessen it. And I think that's a misconception a lot of people have is that, especially in a culture where it's all about hustle and just continuous, we don't actually see this as something that improves ourselves. But that's what really struck me about the book. And so just think about this in my own context. As I said earlier, I was just pushing. My legs were exhausted. I was having trouble walking some days because I was pushing so hard that every day, I was actually trying to do a run. It was getting worse and worse. And I was like, how is this happening? Because I'm obviously putting in the energy and the effort. And then think about that in the terms of education. Do we do the same thing? Do we continuously run our legs, for lack of a better term, to the point where it's hard for them to even function? And then we wonder why we're struggling so much. So I think that idea of stress plus rest equals growth is one that's really important to consider, but also consider are we actually in the place where we're doing stress plus stress because that does equal burnout whether that's personally professionally at the individual level or the organizational level the second quote that stuck out to me is this one an individualized routine goes beyond just priming us to work it also alters our biology changing our hormonal profile in a manner that increases strength energy confidence creativity attention and memory so this quote really stuck with me because it focused on having, and this part of the book, it focused on having just routine and routine. For example, I'm sitting in my office. I have a certain structure. I got certain things on a certain side and I know what my experience is. I typically wake up at the same time every day. I do exercise at the same time every day. I work at the same time every day. And I also, I know, this is going to sound weird. I take naps in certain parts of the week because that actually helps me to recover. And that is really important to me. The routine has helped me. And for all of you who have been following my journey for any point of time, you have seen that I've lost a lot of weight, really got my health in check, really recalibrated myself to a place where I was focused on health and wellness. The thing that I can say helped the most through that process was having routine. And I was forced into routine. March of 2020, as 
everyone's world changed, including mine. My work had continuously been focused on traveling and working with school districts all over the world. And that's really hard to get a routine. That's something that I really struggled with. And so all of a sudden I'm grounded, not going anywhere. And what helped was I started figuring out a routine that I would eat at a certain time every day. And I would exercise at a certain time every day. And when you think about that, not only would I eat a certain time of the day, I would eat the same meals. I knew what I was eating. And a lot of people might think that's boring, but <laughs> this is going to sound weird. Couldn't we use a little boring in our lives? Wouldn't that be okay once in a while? Like we just know what we can count on. And that had really helped me because I, I started figuring out like, I, hey, here's a routine I got to follow and it's going to help me get through. I know what to expect and that's helpful. Think about in the terms of the classroom. When you go into a classroom, are we continuously changing the decorations or change what's on the walls, how the classroom looks? Are we actually messing up a kid's routine or is there like consistency where you know what to expect? Think about when we do our staff time. We're always thinking about the time that we're doing icebreakers and it's gotta be different every single time. Would there be a benefit? I'm asking, honestly asking the question, would there be a benefit of just saying, hey, we're gonna always spend the first 10 minutes of our staff time just talking to each other. No icebreaker activity. Just come in here. We're going to relax and chill and we're going to have some consistency. It's a question I'm legitimately asking and I think it's really one um, we should all consider. And now that I'm back on the road speaking, a uh, pretty busy schedule, one of the things that I've struggled with and I'm trying to find is how do I build routine in an environment where routine is not there? And little things I do, and people used to make fun of me for this, but it makes sense. A lot of times I'll have to be on the road and I'll have to answer email or have to do some work and I don't have an access to my office. And what I do is I look for a Starbucks. And the reason I look, and they're like, why don't you try this coffee shop? Why don't you try this? Why don't you get some variety and things like that? And part of the reason that I actually look for that Starbucks is because I know what it's going to look like. I have a good feeling of kind of the setup. I know what coffee I can get. And actually having that routine, getting a specific, I know this sounds weird, getting a specific coffee gets me into the mood to start writing, to start putting stuff together. There's routines I have that when I'm on a plane. So when I know, when I know I'm about to take off, I grab a book, I start reading it, I read it, and then the plane takes off. <laughs> I... This is, I'm an old man. I tend to fall asleep when it's elevating, when it's elevating, you know, I relax, things like that. And then a little bit of time in, then I start doing my work. So I calm myself down, relax, go into that space. And I make these routines that I could count on to make me more efficient. So just thinking about this in your own path, how do you actually create those routines in the busyness of every day? Is there ways that you can actually create and this is gonna sound weird create routine in chaos and that's sometimes what i try to do way easier to build those routines when i'm going to be at home i know the environment know the structure but when i'm on the road i got to build routine in chaos that's what i'm struggling with and so the last quote i want to share that really stuck out to me with the book is this one purpose fosters motivation motivation lets us endure a greater perception of effort and enduring a greater perception of effort often results in better performance. So this notion that purpose fosters motivation, going back to my going back to my health journey. One of the things that I had in my head for years and years and wasn't helping was hey, I want to get back into better shape because I just want to fit back into the clothes that I could wear that are still hanging in my closet and they're like my aspirational clothes and one day I'm going to fit back into them. And that was what I felt was my drive, but it wasn't really pulling it toward me. What had happened is that, and going back to COVID, is that there was a lot of indications that the, some of the most harmful aspects of COVID were happening if you were struggling with obesity, which I was. And so I started realizing like, wow, if I don't get this in check, I'm not gonna be here for my kids. And I, then I started thinking about the life moments that I wanted to be at, graduations, weddings, things like that. And I wanted to be there. And that purpose for me then became about something other than myself, outside of myself. And that's what really got 
my health in check. Now I can actually fit back into those clothes, but that's like a side effect. It wasn't a drive. There wasn't really something that compelling to drive me. Being alive for my kids, that's pretty compelling. That really mattered to me. And that really helped me. And so a lot of times in education, you hear people complaining about this. Oh, oh, someone till it says, remind your why. I get why they're complaining because in education, we'll use that almost as a way to bludgeon people. Hey, I know that we've done everything to make this as hard as possible and it sucks, but remember your why. And I think it is really important that we understand what our purpose is. We identify that for ourselves. But if you're in a leadership position, what is really crucial is you do not get in the way of why people showed up to that job, why they people picked that career in the first place. You can say, remember your why all you want, but do not be the obstacle to it and do not throw up barriers in front of people where they actually are now doing something that they never envisioned that actually isn't their dream, but is a nightmare for what they're doing every single day. So really thinking about that motivation, that purpose, and what really will pull you towards something, but also ensuring that when you serve other people, don't be the obstacle to that purpose as well. And so the last quote that stuck out to me is this one. The single greatest skill in any endeavor is doing the work, not doing the work that is easy for you, not doing the work that makes you look good, not doing the work when you feel inspired, just doing the work. And as much as I actually talk about the importance of rest, there is also the importance of stress. They are connected to one another. And it reminds me when I read this, or when I listened to it otherwise, even though I have ordered the book as well, it reminds me of this quote. And I don't know who to attribute this to, it's been attributed to tons of people, that it takes years and years of hard work to become an overnight success. Often when we celebrate people, we celebrate them when they're at a certain point, but we don't recognize the behind the scenes. And a lot of the times, a lot of times what I've been trying to do in my work is to share the learning, not the product, but the process. When I talk, and I know I talk a lot about my health and wellness, and if you don't think those are con health and wellness is connected to learning, then you're maybe missing a point. There is a connection to those elements and how important it is learning about yourself is something that will really help you to learn about others as well and to better serve others as well. And I had shared my journey nonstop. And a lot of people have started following me, started connecting with me in different social media spaces and they see one thing, but they don't see all the things that I struggle with and the effort and even talking about this, how this December I was actually taking a break and feeling more exhausted during the break until I started thinking, okay, I am pushing myself to the point of burnout and I'm going to actually start the year more exhausted than when I ended it because I'm not thinking about rest. So the reason I'm even talking about this book, the reason I do these epic book reviews is to, so that you can see the behind the scenes of what got to this podcast, what gets to the thinking. And a lot of people say to me, you know, whether they want to start Instagram, blogging, things like that. I don't want, you know, I don't want to be coming off as bragging. And I'm like, yeah, I get that. And if you say I'm the best teacher ever and all of you suck, <laughs> that's probably bragging, right? Or if uh, I remember one time somebody was like, oh, let's go for like a 10 mile run. I could barely run. And they, it was almost like they were, they knew I couldn't do it. And they were trying to put me in my place. And that really bothered me. They didn't understand where I was. And one thing I always say is how do we help move people from their point A to their point B. How do we get people to understand where they are, but where they can go at that moment and building confidence and competence along the way. And so what I say to them is don't think about it as bragging, just share your learning openly, right? So when I share stuff that I'm doing for my health and wellness, I don't say you should be doing this. This is what you should do. I just say, hey, this is stuff I tried. And this has really helped me. This has helped me find success. If you can modify it, take it, adapt it. There's things that I do, obviously, as someone who travels and speaks and consults, it's very different than someone who's in a classroom every single day. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to take what I said and do everything I say because we probably do totally different things and that's okay. But are there things from my learning that you could take and say, okay, this doesn't work here, but I can twist it, reiterate it, and make it work like this for me. 
Is there things from my learning that you could take and implement your own and vice versa? So don't think about it as bragging and don't do that. But if you share your learning along the way, I think it can really help. And I love that idea of just doing the work, but do we do the work and share that learning so people can learn alongside and grow through that process as well? So again, the book is called Peak Performance. It's linked down below. I would love for you to write in your comments, what are some ways that you implement rest, maybe in your professional life, in your personal life? And I'm not talking about, I go to holidays. I'm talking about in your every single day, for you to help grow. I highly recommend this book. I think it would be great for a book discussion, especially if you're a school or a school district, thinking about how do we actually implement rest in a continuous way to get better for ourselves and ultimately for our kids and how do we help with our kids to push them to become better but also thoughtfully implement rest so they continuously grow. I hope you enjoyed the epic book review. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for all you do. Take care.